this old man, he played one, he played knick-knack on my thumb with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone, this old man came. Greetings, Sam. I had gotten away from the bloodlines because the Lord had led me in other directions, and so I focused on the topics in which I was being led to reveal to you. I am now back on the bloodlines, and herewith I bring you the Disney bloodline. Walt Disney grew up fascinated with the occult, and he was in an abusive home situation. He was fascinated with cartoons, nature, and children. In fact, he never wanted to grow up. He had an intuitive sense for quality cartoons that would appeal to children. And at some point, the syndicate got him indebted to, him, to them, and this was later in life when he became an adult. At that point, he was their man. He owed them a debt that they held over him. Now remember, during this time in the 20s and the 30s, the syndicate basically ran Hollywood. So when Walt was attempting to get into the film industry, somehow he got himself intertwined with the mob and they owned him for the rest of his life. First, he, um, he became a porn king. A lot of people don't know that, but a lot of people do. And one of his victims remembers that he was sadistic and that he in particularly enjoyed snuff porn films. Now these were films where the participants, um, maybe one or maybe all of them, were killed in the end. And they were very popular at a certain point in America. Now they've gone underground. But there was a time when they were readily available. Walt Disney's interest in children was far from altruistic. In fact, the children that he encountered were instructed to call Walt Disney Uncle Walt. Now, an example of this were the Mouseketeers. And for those of you who know how mind control programmers um, have traditionally worked, they like to be called uncle by their child victims. Disneyland and Disney World are world famous and they are the pride of America. They are also extremely important programming centers for the Illuminati to create total mind-controlled slaves. And um, you will notice that there are many, many Hollywood and entertainment figures who come out of the Disney factory. Disney, Disneyland is also involved with providing a place for rituals, porn, and other satanic activities. In terms of deception, Disney movies and Disney amusement parks rate as one of the best deceptions. In fact, there are so many hidden messages in the different uh, Disney productions, and then there are um, equally as many blatant sexual innuendos and outright um, blasphemies that they're impossible to overlook. Now, the goal for the elite was to have some place that people from all over the world could come to without raising any suspicions. And such a place would be the perfect cover for many of their criminal activities. I cannot tell you how many children have been reported lost in the Disney theme parks. And in many cases, which the public doesn't know about, the children were never found again. Now, the elite's great plan calls for family life to be destroyed, for the children to rebel against their parents, and for the world to become more violent. Children needed to immerse in images of violence so that a violent society could be created. And you can see this throughout in the different um, Disney cartoons, that there is a lot of violence. Also, the elite want to promote occultism. And also in these um, Disney films, 90% of them are heavily involved in some type of occult, whether it be witchcraft, genies, uh, magic, you name it, these things are promoted in Disney. Um, not to mention gambling and sex is very pro pre prominent in the cartoons and this is what children young children are looking at and their minds are still formulating and this is their idea 
of what the real world is like. Now, back to the theme parks. With such huge crowds, it doesn't take much imagination to figure out how the Illuminati and the elite have been able to do sneaky criminal activities right in front of people. And the public never sees it in the middle of all activity. Um, from the time of the Roman Empire, um, and I'm just going to go back into a little history, but from the time of the Roman Empire, there have been those uh, elite, and they have been, these are the ones who are in control of the mystery religions and the European aristocracy. And they have known from that far back, from the time of the Roman Empire, they have known about bread and circus. Now, you may say, well, what is that? Bread and circus refers to the concept that if the masses of people are given entertainment and food, then they are easy to control. And this is why whenever you go out for entertainment, whether it be a movie or to see a, a sports event or even concerts or what have you, there are always food and beverage concession stands. Now, Walt Disney was very good friends with the Masonic prophet H.G. Wells. And in Wells' book, A Modern Utopia, he said that there would be lots of shows in the New World Order. Um, the World Future Society in a book review in their publication, Future Survey Annual 1993, um, described Disney as, quote, control of commodities such as entertainment and access to commodities translates into control over people, end quote. Now, the impact of Disney is monumental. Mickey Mouse t-shirts can be seen being worn by people all over the world. Disney World and Disneyland are the quest for a large segment of humanity who often esteem these amusement parks as the highlight of their life. In fact, there were several Super Bowl commercials where, and it's usually the MVP, is asked, what is he going to do next? And he replies, I'm going to Disney World. The Bible speaks clearly. What is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. And this is, this is according to the word of God. These things that people are looking um, and putting on a pedestal um, as, as something, you know, that they have to do or must do, these bucket lists and all this stuff, they are important to the world, but they are not important to God. In fact, John 2, 16 says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. So those people who put um, this uh, Disney world up on some pedestal, like it's some... Um, so it's like um, some people uh, value that more than going to heaven. They, they want to get to Disney World, but I haven't heard a commercial yet that says, um, what am I going to do next? Well, I want to go to heaven. That's where I want to go. I don't want to go to Disneyland. I want to go to heaven. Let me get back on topic because I'll start preaching, but uh, there's time, time for that. Okay, actually, I'm preaching now. Some of you already know that. Okay, behind the appearance of the wholesomeness of Disney lays abominations and some of the most grotesque aspects of generational occultism that the world has ever seen. Disney's Magic Kingdom has become an American institution that impacts people all over the world, from the cradle to the grave. Hollywood directly praised Walt Disney as an exemplary model of what the movie industry should be. And with the power of Benai Brith and the ADL behind him, Walt began sailing to fame. Now, just so you know, during this time in the 20s, the Benai Brith and um, ADL, which is the, um, 
the Anti-Defamation League. Uh, and I believe I'm correct, but I'm sure someone out there will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they were the Jewish mobsters running Hollywood. Many of these people, these um, the Goldwyn Myers and all of those um, bigwigs in Hollywood um, who were Jewish, they were also mob, and and there were many. Many Jewish mobsters. Mob wasn't only Italian. A lot of people think that, but that's not so. You had Meyer Lansky. You had quite a few of those um, Jewish mobsters that were running things. And they got behind Walt because he offered something different. He offered cartoons, and they thought this would make the movies more family-friendly. But more importantly, they wanted the money that came with the family coming to the movies because you're going to sell more tickets if the husband and wife bring the kiddies than if you're only appealing to adults. However, what a lot of people don't know is the genius behind Walt Disney, the animator who made Walt Disney a success, was Oob Eworks. And... Um, that's how his name is spelled. I pronounce things phonetically, by the way. So um, I could be off, but that's the way it looks in, in print. Oob Eworks. His first name is UB. And um, on, an, on many occasions, um, Walt Disney even said himself that Oob was the best animator in the world. In fact, without him, taking Walt's ideas and turning them into a reality, Walt would have never become famous because he was not an animator. And in the, um, there's a book, Disney's World and Disney Animation, and uh, the illusion of life have, have information on the unheralded uh, genius of Oob Eworks. Now, another great artist was someone named Floyd Gottfriedson. Now, Floyd drew all the Mickey Mouse cartoons from 1932 until 1975. That's 45 years! That's a long time to be drawing cartoons. He must have enjoyed his work. But Floyd Gottfriedson was a Mormon, and he was born in a railway station in 1905, and he was raised in a tiny Mormon town, Sigurd, which was 180 miles south of Salt Lake City. In 1931, before Floyd took over the Mickey Mouse drawings, he would take suggestions from Walt Disney on what to draw. And for instance, uh, Disney puzzled him by insisting he do a cartoon series of Mickey Mouse committing suicide. And when Floyd questioned this, because now remember he was a Mormon and he's like, you, you've got to be kidding, Walt said that he thought it would be funny. So this gives you an idea of what the person is, aside from being just a, um, a, uh, a uh, pedophile and also a, you know, a, um, a person who enjoyed uh, seeing people killed on film when he knew that this was actually um, being done in real life, he also thought death was funny. Now, over the years, the Walt Disney products never mentioned Floyd's name. And Fred Moore, who was involved in the creation of Pluto, the, the cartoon character, and a few others, um, also was never mentioned. And even the Walt Disney famous signature was designed by someone else. And Walt Disney had to be taught to write the signature. And this is from a book by Richard Schickel. And it's the Disney version, The Lifetime, Art, and Commerce of Walt Disney. And it was published in 1968. You might still be able to find it. But one cartoon animator who joined Disney in 1940 recalled that Walt Disney told him on, on his first day at work, you're new here, and, and I'm quoting, you're new here, and I want you to understand just one thing. What we're selling here is the name Walt Disney. If you can swallow that and always remember it, you'll be happy here. But if you've got any ideas about seeing the name Ken Anderson, and this was the person who's telling the story, up there, it's best for you to leave right away. So he had no intention of giving the people who helped make him famous credit. In fact, he was plagiarizing people's work by taking credit for art that he did not create. 
Over the years, close associates of Disney um, revealed so many things. The, the public got a feel for Disney's attitude toward the Illuminati bloodlines. In fact, in the Disney, the Disney movie, The Happiest Millionaire, which is about Anthony J. Drexel Biddle and Angie Duke. And you can look them up, but um, I'll give you something to snap your, um, your memory, your recall. These are supposedly the families that came over on the Mayflower. They are direct descendants of the families that um, came over and, and dis you know, uh, discovered America, supposedly. And um, there was also, several years back, a woman who was busted as a, mad a madam in California, and she was called the Mayflower Madam because she was directly related to these um, Biddles. And so, you know, the, you should be able to recognize, recognize the names, but the movie um, The Happiest Millionaire was based on a book written by Cordelia Drexel Biddle, and it was written by her about her family. Now, Shirley Temple Black sat on the Disney Board of Directors from 1974 to 1975. In fact, her films were used for some of the early 40s and 50s programming and the teaching slaves body movements and dance. And um, she married someone from an elite family in San Francisco named Charles A. Black. And Charles A. Black was a lieutenant colonel in the Pentagon who lived in Bethesda, Maryland. Now, was Shirley an early example of brainstem scarring, scarring to get geniuses? And that's a whole nother video. But this is a technique that's used to create genius. And I mentioned also in, an, in the video, I believe, prior to this, how uh, parents uh, groom their kids, not all, but a lot of them from an early age to create geniuses. They start talking to them while they're still in the womb. I never said I advocated that. I just said that it was done and this is how it's done. And so this is something also, the brainstem scarring is also something that was done and I believe is still done in secret. Um, Shirley had a brother who developed multiple scler sclerosis from this technique. And in turn, later in life, Shirley Temple co-founded the International Federation of Multiple Sclerosis Societies. And she was a member on its executive committee. Uh, she also represented the United States at the UN General Assembly in 1969. She is a member of the Secret Society C Sierra Club. Well, she's passed away now, but when she was alive, she was a member of the Sierra Club. And she had been decorated with the Cross of Malta, which is another secret society. Um, she has shown clues that she might have been a monarch mind control slave as a child. Um, other associates of Disney include Warren Buffett, a major stockholder in Walt Disney. He owns 40% of Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. And that is a parent that happens to own lots of shares of Disney stock. Then there's a uh, Disney chairman, Michael Damon Eisner. And he is a CIA asset, and he's connected to the mob. Some insiders believe he is connected to elements of the CIA and the mob that are anti-NWO. Despite this, these anti-NWO factions also employ mind control. So it's like a contradiction. Eisner ignored a threat by Red China to boycott Disney, Disney products if he made a movie about the nation Tibet that China controls. And um, the UN, the Commerce Department, and the State Department all tried unsuccessfully to get him to back down on this film. However, a paper trail connecting Michael Eisner and Walt Disney to uh, mind control um, also connects them to, to the support of the Boys and Girls Club of Napa Valley. And by the way, the film was made. Off the top of my head, I can't remember what it was, but um, he didn't back down. Um, he's also connected, you know, to this Boys and Girls Club, which is used to supply children for pedophilia and mind control. How is this done? Well, the Boys and Girls Club is used to supply caddies 
for the Silverado Country Club. So you know what a caddy is. These are the, and for those of you who don't, I'm not being, you know, an idiot. I'm just saying that there are people who may not know what this is. So I want to break it down. The, the caddy is the one who helps the golfer. He, he uh, picks up the balls off the, um, off the turf. He, he rides around um, with the, the, um, the golf clubs. And so he basically is there to help the people who, is, who are playing, he or she. And so they recruit young people from this Boys and Girls Club to be caddies for the Silverado Country Club. However, now this being a very elite country club, these children are also on occasion used as mind control slaves for the sexual perversions of the elite. And how convenient is that? The children are very um, selectively chosen for that position. I believe they also receive a stipend as well. So, you know, when you're a kid and you're getting money and you're made to feel part of something big, and 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 special you're all in because it makes you the man or or the woman you know when when you have these types of um connections however it's at a price um i'm just going to wind down with with just um a little uh take on some of the disney occult movies that were just blatant aladdin Here's a wise, cracking, all-powerful genie. And as you know, that's all um, occultism. There is no such thing as a genie coming out of a bottle. Bed knobs and broomsticks. This was made in 1971, and it's about a witch who finds a magic formula from a Lion King, and the magic formula raises a ghostly army of armor in a museum which stops a band of German commandos. Beyond Witch Mountain, uh, that's night from 1982, and it's a pair of twins. They leave Witch Mountain and have to use their special occult powers to outwit a character named Duranian. The Black Cauldron, 1985, a horned king uses his magic to fight a clairvoyant pig and the pig's keeper. The animation costs $25 million, but the movie fa failed. It, it didn't go anywhere. They didn't make the the amount that it costs, um, and there's so many more. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through all of them because for those of you who have indeed um, been to any Disney movie, you know. I mean, you've got Cruella Deville and all this evil stuff that they're feeding our children. I'll never forget when my grandsons were young, they insisted. As a matter of fact, one of them disobeyed me when I told him he couldn't look at that Harry Potter crap and I fell asleep and I wake up to see that he had popped the tape back in and you know I mean this is how much importance it held to him to that he he felt it was okay to disobey me and to just go ahead and put it back in because he was addicted to that crap and so, and even though that wasn't Disney, but nonetheless, my point is, is that kids who grow up with all this paranormal stuff and, you know, they're children and they're, they're still learning and becoming accustomed to who and what life is about, who they're going to be in this life. And, and they need to be protected. Um, on that note, I'm, I'm going to pray, Lord, protect us, protect the children, you know, these um, bloodline videos, they're, they're very, very um, difficult for me to do because I'm talking about wicked people who, although the earlier um, generations of these people are the ones responsible for creating the uh, lunacy and the evil that manifested as a result of them gaining wealth and fame in this lifetime, the effects continue even into this age. There are children and, and people who grew up on this crap and they're, and they're walking around. A lot of them are crazy. A lot of them are doing all sorts of wicked things. And a lot of them are, are just, and I'm not talking about people who are born mentally disabled and cannot help themselves. There's a distinct difference, Lord, and help the people to understand 
there is a distinct difference between those who act out and do crazy things and those who have no control over a mental disability that they were born with. Those who act out and do crazy things, they have made themselves insane by what they continually feed themselves. A diet of evil will make you evil. People don't understand that. You become the company you keep. Lord, help them to see that. That if they keep company with a, a TV set that's on 24 hours a day and they use it as a babysitter for their kids and the kids are turning to this demonic thing and that demonic thing and, and Harry this and um, Houdini that and, and Aladdin this and all this um, stuff, that they're making them crazy and they're making them act out because they think they can just snap a finger and their problems will disappear and they think they can um they can um address evil with evil and they're gonna put a spell on that cast that classmate who's bothering them and and they don't understand lord that we are we are not this is not who you made us to be you made us to be loving people and caring people so i pray i pray that the parents will do a better job of monitoring their children and what they're doing now we have the internet so it's not just the tv that's responsible help the parents to monitor the kids and to teach them in the way that they, sh they should go lord i pray for the children i thank you lord i thank you for the hearers of the word in jesus name amen this old man he played one he played nickname